everyone, and welcome to Vivian Health series on the horizon in healthcare. My name is Dr. Beth Brooks, and I'm the clinical advisor here at Vivian Health. And this is one of our series of monthly videos where we talk to different nurse leaders, nurse entrepreneurs, nurse experts about different topics related to nurse recruitment and retention. And then I'm also doing other series, just videos sharing information about current research. So today, in honor of Nurses Week, I'm so excited to have two nurse entrepreneurs join us. And certainly there have been nurse entrepreneurs for many, you know, for quite some time. But what's so interesting and different about this group of nurse entrepreneurs is they're the first nurse entrepreneurs that have grown up in the phone, iPhone, internet generation. And so we're seeing a lot of different ideas come out from this new generation of young nurse entrepreneurs. And there've always been nurses who've been on the fringes, kind of pushing their career out to what the limits of what one would think is a normal nursing career. And so now we have these so many nurse entrepreneurs out there. So today we want to talk about exploring non-traditional career options. And I know I've had a very non-traditional career I've written about non-traditional careers, and I've also written a little bit about nurse entrepreneurs and how they are really taking us as nursing as a profession to that next level. So today I have two colleagues uh, who've become friends who are inspirational, Anthony Lambert and Jennifer Mancellis, and they are both professional registered nurses. They both started as staff nurses, which they will tell you about. But while they were working as staff nurses, they were just surprised that there wasn't a tool or a piece of equipment to help nurses at night when they go into a patient's room and don't want to disturb the patients. So that was their first dip the toe in the water into becoming nurse entrepreneurs. And so now they've created their first product and launched it. And it was called You Night Light. And they'll tell you a little more about that. And it's this wearable light that healthcare workers can use to illuminate that workspace at night. And of course, we all know that waking a patient up at night is probably not the best for their healing. So while they brought this product to market, then they soon realized, oh my gosh, there is this hole or this gap. And there was not anywhere out there on the internet for nurses and other healthcare workers to find gear and resources and all the kinds of equipment that we need to do a good job. So they expanded their vision and started building the world's first, I want drum roll, the world's (laughs) first digital home for healthcare workers. So I want to welcome Anthony and Jennifer and say thank you for coming today to be with us. So hi. 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 Thank you for having us. We're so excited to chat with you and share our story and hope that it inspires other nurses out there to create and make their ideas come to life. So yeah. happy to um, happy to chat, happy to be here. All right. So you ready? Here's my first question. I'm sure if it were me and I was a staff nurse and wondering, tell us a little bit about how each of you made the transition from staff nurse to nurse entrepreneur. So now that you own the world's first digital home for healthcare workers. So tell us, each of you sort of share that journey. How did you meet? How did you decide to work together? And just tell us a little more about your backgrounds. Yeah. Let's go first, Jennifer. I can start us (laughs) out. Um, Yeah, my nursing background, I've been a nurse now for the last 10 years or so. And um, most of my career is working in the neonatal ICU. And I was working bedside there when I met Anthony. And I guess this is part of history too. So sorry, Anthony, but we met at a hackathon back in fall of 2019. And it was really kind of the seedling for um, the idea that there needed to be tools and resources to support healthcare workers and really excited about the idea of creating things that were helpful for our fellow healthcare workers, just making things more efficient and easier. And that was kind of like the foundation. And then for the transition, it really started me working clinically and dabbling to build a nightlight when it was like its initial sort of um, baby prototypes and working out all of that before we actually launched. 
And then in 2021, we had the opportunity to be a part of Accelerator, like a business accelerator out of Silicon Valley called Y Combinator. And one of the caveats was that we had to be full time. So May 27th, 2021 was my last clinical shift. And then a week and a half later, we jumped like feet first in and been working on um, building the company full time since. But I'll go ahead and um, let Anthony kind of share his side of what it was like in his transition mm-hmm. to go from being a student nurse to um, running our company. Yeah, definitely lots of ups and downs. The whole journey has been such a roller coaster. And I think something that's really like important to our story is we walked into this nurse entrepreneur role with like no kind of direct, like, okay, this is what we're doing. Like we have a full plan and vision. Like we kind of just, it happened. And and I think we just kind of like went for it and, and kind of seized the opportunity. Um, I actually met Jennifer when I was in nursing school. I think I was in my third year of nursing school. Passionate about problem solving and, and innovation, but I never really kind of realized that my nursing degree may actually be preparing me for kind of an entrepreneurial role. And I think it really wasn't until that nurse hackathon where I met Jennifer that I viewed nursing and innovation and entrepreneurship kind of together as like one term, like nursing innovation, and had this like realization of like the nursing process, which is like the foundational core of nursing, ADPI assessment, diagnosis. That's what you do as an entrepreneur. You assess, you diagnose a problem. Then you have to plan and implement and actually create a solution. And then you have to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. Um, So it kind of clicked for me. I was like, wow, you know, like this kind of critical thinking I'm learning while becoming a nurse is actually very kind of synergistic with innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I graduated nursing school, passed the NCLEX, and then (laughs) that's kind of when we started our kind of full-time journey. So I definitely went into this journey as a new grad nurse, and that has been kind of crazy. I definitely didn't go into nursing school thinking I would end up running a business full-time. I think it just goes to show like how versatile the nursing degree really is. Mm -hmm. So where did you both go to school? I I think, Anthony, I I think you went to Penn? Yep, I went to the University of Pennsylvania. So was there a culture there or, because I've written an article about other nurse entrepreneurs who have been in school who have this desire to be a nurse entrepreneur, and they're really maybe aren't so many resources in the college of nursing. So, so how did that, how did that school experience maybe help support your vision or help you learn what you needed to learn? I think it's a great question and so important. I feel like the nursing education needs to do so much more about exposing students to topics outside like the traditional bedside role because nursing is so versatile. There's nurses in literally every sector of society from Congress, um, tech, business, research, academia, the community. I think I was super fortunate to go to a nursing school that was really much on the forefront of pushing innovation and encouraging nursing students and nurses in that ecosystem to pursue their innovative ideas and to kind of leverage our frontline perspective to create solutions. So really, once Jennifer and I had um, an idea and like a vision for what this first product could be, the first thing we did was like apply to every startup competition, pitch competition, little grant funds here and there throughout Penn and throughout the Philadelphia community and beyond to to just get some kind of funding to help us start building a prototype and deal with manufacturing and even get resources to do that because we had no idea how to find a manufacturer. So luckily we were, I think, fortunate to have me still a part of a university because I think there was a lot of startup resources part of that. Yeah. And Jennifer, so Anthony, I because obviously Pennsylvania is on the East Coast. Are you both from, and I know Jennifer's from the West Coast. You are too, Anthony. So Jennifer, you went across the country to go to school and met Anthony at Penn? No, I was no, actually okay. going to school in, um, in California. California. So, and I met Anthony at the hackathon, hackathon. back in Okay. Which was was on the East Coast. So, John, you did come to the East Coast Coast. for that. Yes, I did travel to the East Coast, to the great state of New Jersey for the for the hackathon um, that I attended that I attended and met Anthony. But I was working 
clinically in California at the time and then flew. And then when we got into the accelerator summer of 2021, Anthony flew from Pennsylvania to California wow. and then we worked together that whole summer and really just grinded to mm-hmm. kind of do start the beginnings of what we are today. Yeah. And so Anthony, when you practiced clinically, you had a little time there though. So what were you, what was your clinical? I know Jennifer said NICU. What was your clinical area? It really wasn't anything in no. the hospital. Yeah. It was yeah. straight through nursing school. Okay. Straight to y Combinator. Okay. Okay. And then, and then, but then you were had, I just have to set, tell everyone about the story in the New York times where you guys, your company was talked about and your product was, you know, showcased. So how did that come about? That was, I'm sure another new experience for a nurse, nurses. That was, yeah, that was incredible. And I distinctly remember the day that the New York Times called us because I was in my last clinical, which was in the emergency department. Jennifer was working clinically as well that day. When we launched pre-orders for our product, the Unite Light, we we were like, how do we get the word out about this product? You know, we had like a few friends purchase it our first week of launch, but we really had no idea how to actually start getting the word out about our product. So we just started emailing all of these like press uh, folks that we found online, like writers, anyone who would kind of try to help us spark some press about the product launch. Mm-hmm. And after like 50 emails, we were so fortunate that someone replied from the Philadelphia Inquirer and wrote an article about us. Mm. And that was basically talking about like this Penn nursing student and nurse creating this product. And then that led to the New York Times picking it up. And the New York Times literally sent me an email, goes, we want to write an article about you. Like, can you guys hop on the phone today? Jennifer and I are literally both in the middle of a 12 hour shift. And we were like, we have to do this. So I told a preceptor, I'm like, I have to go get interviewed by the New York Times. Jennifer <laughs> ran to the break room. I ran to the cafeteria and we took this 30 minute interview with the New York Times at the hospital. And it was like the craziest moment. And then when it went live, it really just kind of gave us a launch pad to really share our message and story. And then that led to other press and other opportunities to kind of help keep the momentum going. So it was one of those moments that the stars kind of just aligned and it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, do you realize, I'm sure you do now, probably at the time you were so in the moment that, you know, you, you don't really process that, but I imagine now as you reflect on it, you think, holy cow, was that a lucky alignment? Because I would imagine any nurse entrepreneur, any entrepreneur would die for someone from the New York times to call them to talk about. So that was just, uh, just so such awesome luck, really. So Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. So talk a little bit about as you've been on this journey, how did you find, or I shouldn't say how I'm I'm assuming you have mentors and folks that you've gone to because yes, you're right. There are certain parts of nursing school that will prepare you, but you probably have both found mentors on the way. So how, how have you done that? And who are, they've been nurses or not, or how, what kind of mentor do you think is important for other nurse entrepreneurs to find on this type of journey? Yeah, I think we always say that people are everything. And honestly, for us, it was some of it was on, uh, it was mentors and people we were connected through, through the accelerators that we are a part of, but some of it as, as silly as it sounds was just like the persistence and grit of reaching out to people. LinkedIn, this will be an ad for LinkedIn because we (laughs) would just LinkedIn people. We didn't know something about something. We would find people who knew what they knew in that space and had that expertise and would reach out and ask them questions um, If they, from it being finance to manufacturing and really kind of open up our network a bit and just find answers. And I think nurses are super great at that, Mm -hmm. like trying to find answers to questions, right? Mm -hmm. Like we know something, okay, we don't know it, but we're great at figuring it out. And I think that we used that like foundational skill of being nurses to our benefit and entering this world where, yeah, we weren't super prepared on how to deal with state sales tax or like manufacturing, but I think just digging in and finding those answers, but along the way, there've been really 
great mentors within the nursing space, within the accelerators that we worked with, especially Y Combinator. We're very fortunate to have the partners that we worked with during our course of time there that were super involved and helping answer our questions and kind of guiding us along the way. And then we still will have like monthly, every other month or so, we'll come to them and have questions about things that we're trying to work through as mm-hmm. as we're trying to let it grow and navigate some of these nuances, mm-hmm. our journey. But yeah, I think it was a, a little bit of a lot of things and reaching out to people and finding mentors to guide us along the way. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you both, and I'm I've got I did prepare some questions, but I'm I'm flipping the order a little bit. You both keep saying hackathons or incubators or accelerators. And to you and me, I'm familiar with those terms, but just share a little bit how those kinds of programs and activities, what is it? Define that, but then where do you find them and how did they help educate us all about the incubator accelerator space? Because that might be new for some folks. For sure. Yeah. It's definitely a world that we didn't really know much about too. I think it was just trying to like go on Google and like do this deep search of like different things and trying to look at other companies that were in adjacent spaces and see like what they did and kind of get advice from them. And honestly, that's how we found out about these accelerators was from other founders of companies like in the nursing space. But yeah, basically, you know, when you're starting a product or a company or whatever it is that you're working on, there's, you know, so many unknowns because you're starting something that doesn't exist, you know, and there's also no boss or kind of like upper management telling you what to do or setting timelines for you or setting really any expectations. So I think for us, what we found is accelerators are really helpful in just kind of creating that space of accountability resources and helping you figure out, you know, the things that you don't know. And that's, you know, no one knows everything, especially when you're starting on this crazy journey. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to, to basically define like what an accelerator and incubator is, it's it's basically like almost like a class that you're taking, if you want to think about it like that, where you have a teacher or a mentor that's kind of guiding you through starting your company. You have peers that are also working on companies and projects, products, et cetera. Um, that kind of creates a community of support for you and helps you stay accountable for your kind of progression of, you know, moving your your idea forward. And then you potentially could get funding or get an opportunity to be in front of investors or grants um, so that you can kind of help fund what you're building. So yeah, I guess you could kind of think about it like it's like a mini class. I feel like even my comedy, it felt like it was like a mini MBA or like Mm-hmm. There's a lot of tech knowledge that was gained from that experience too, and product experience. And then in terms of a hackathon, a hackathon is basically that kind of same environment, but instead of being maybe over like three months, it's over one weekend. So it's like an expedited version of just <laughs> coming in, collaborating with others, finding a problem, ideating on a solution, and then creating a rapid prototype, mm-hmm. often leveraging like a problem solving framework like design thinking, which is just like AdPi, literally exactly Mm -hmm. the same. Finding a problem, assessing it, trying to talk to the end user and trying to ideate a solution and and build a super quick prototype to test if it works. So the hackathon is like an expedited version just to kind of get you into that mindset. But I think, yeah, what we found throughout our journey is like, while being a part of these spaces, although we may have often been the only two nurses there, um, whether it was at Penn or at YC, wherever it was, I think we always kind of realized that nursing was our secret weapon um, Mm -hmm. because it kind of prepared us for this mindset. And once we kind of shifted how we thought about some things and brought in some like more business skills like finance and tech and product and supplemented that with that nursing perspective, it really was, I think the light switch went off for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So Jennifer, Anthony's talked about the pitch comp or excuse me, hackathons and incubators. You talk about pitch competitions and what's that like? And did you guys think about that? Were you on the shark tank of some somewhere? So talk a little bit about that piece of this process also. Yeah, I think a lot of the opportunities for the pitch competitions actually came through Penn that Anthony was able to go ahead and sign us up for and like led the way as being a Penn student, but we're super grateful for those opportunities, but it was just an opportunity for us to showcase what we were building and what our big vision was. 
And I think the advantage for us was, yes, we were two nurses that were entering these pitch competitions where there hadn't been historically a nursing presence in them. And so it definitely sent us, set us apart from, and I think that was true even in some of these accelerators that we applied for being entering into a space where it wasn't typical for the founders to be both nurses and maybe not have that technical background, but really understand the market in a special way that other folks did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. That leads really nicely into my next question. What does it take to be a successful nurse entrepreneur? And in my mind, you all, I've met many, many startup companies. I mentor here in Chicago at the incubator and accelerator and 10 times out of 10, the companies I meet are healthcare companies with no nurse and could be maybe even no physician. I mean, it depends on what the the solution is, but you don't often see, or or let me say it a different way. The companies that I see and, and mentor and talk with, you can tell whether they do or don't have that sort of insider knowledge. So you both have that one leg up. So you you have that. Now, what else do you need to be a nurse entrepreneur? Do I need to go back to school if someone's sitting listening to you both? Do I need to, I don't know, get an MBA? Do I, do I need a certification? What, how do you, what would you say it takes to succeed once you've taken that step? Who well, I don't, either of you can answer yeah. it. It's a general question. Anthony can go ahead and finish this off. I think the first piece, I think this goes for anybody though, whether you are a nurse entrepreneur or otherwise is being really passionate about the problems that you're solving because it is not an easy road and there are stone walls and blockades and barricades like down every path. And it takes um, an obscene amount of perseverance and grit to kind of overcome all of those obstacles because the no's are more prevalent than the yeses for sure. So it's very easy to hit those walls and be like, this is too hard. So I think that if you have an idea in mind and something that you're wanting to kind of push forward and create, make sure that it's something that you are super passionate about and that adversity isn't going to kind of stop you from making sure that this vision and this mission comes to fruition because it is not an easy path for by any means. But I think that would be the starting point before you hit go on anything else, um, just to make sure that you know your why. And I think that we say that often in this journey of ours, like really understanding the why and your North Star for what you're doing, because that mm-hmm. will carry you through all of the hiccups that you're going to come along in your day-to-day journey um, as founding a business or um, getting your product to market or you know hitting go on your digital product that you have been nervous to go ahead and send out into the world. But I think that, you know, getting, getting started and making sure that, you know, your why is the most important part. And then I'm sure Anthony has some very valuable advice. So I will lean it to him, but I think starting there is important. So succeeding in nurse entrepreneur, step number one, passion. (laughs) Okay. Step number two, go Anthony. What would be step number two be? I think Jen might have even hit on step number two, which is just starting, honestly, like <laughs> yeah. actually launching whatever you're doing, even if it's super scrappy, even if your first product or your first prototype, your first, whatever it is, is super embarrassing. Just start and get it out there into the world. See what people say. And that will help you kind of build the momentum for our first product of the wearable light. I mean, our first version was really scrappy. You know, it was, we were scared to launch it because we didn't know how people were going to react and it was just, there was so much kind of fear associated with launching. And I distinctly remember like shipping out those first seven packages and just being like, oh my gosh, like I'm embarrassed. Like what are people going to say? There's going to be hate comments, but you really just have to kind of get it out there into the world and almost just, you know, if people are responding to it and like, even if it's good or bad, like that is really helpful to iterate and to kind of get to your next version and, and to kind of build up that momentum. So I think Jen hit on that as well. I would say just really highlighting to answer your question. No, you don't need an MBA. You don't need to go back to school. You don't need all these certifications. We certainly didn't have that to start our journey. And although, you know, we have faced so many kind of mini failures along the way, like you're kind of, you fail at something every day and you just kind of learn from it. And then you 
keep that noted in your pocket. Okay, I'm like, okay, so that's how you do it for next time. Mm -hmm. And then the next time that challenge comes, you have a little bit more experience. Yeah. And once you do that over and over again, you kind of almost teach yourself throughout that process. And again, I think that just goes back to being resourceful and, and kind of asking for help when you need it. I would say probably my, my big piece of advice here for succeeding with nurse entrepreneurship is to network, to build your network and to really build an interdisciplinary team. Because at the end of the day, you know, we don't have coding experience. We don't have X, Y, and Z experience. And you can certainly learn anything, which I think you should totally try to learn as much as you can be a jack of all trades. But if you can bring on team members that are passionate with you or co-founders that complement your skills, I think you have a higher chance of success and you can really leverage your nursing perspective and your skill set to lead the ship forward and then bring on folks that can help you kind of reach the vision. And, you know, we for a while didn't have any engineer on our team. You know, we were building everything ourselves with no code web tools. And the first version of our marketplace, we built completely ourselves and everything was super scrappy with spreadsheets and Google forms and everything <laughs> else behind the scenes. And we just tried to Make it all look pretty, what you have to do to get started. But um, network, use your resources, and believe in yourself because you really can do it. Nursing is, we literally innovate every day as nurses. So oh it already is so much ingrained in our foundational skills. So I think it's just about all those other things and just kind of helping you kind of prepare for success as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. So before I ask you my final question, I want, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I'm listening to you both. It's, it's sort of dawned on me that we haven't put a little plug in for Adney. So explain exactly what your marketplace is and what's the community you're building and what might nurses find when they come to you and to Adney. So this is your chance. <laughs> Jennifer, Love you start us off. Yeah. I'll start us off. And yeah, and Adney is a community marketplace for healthcare workers by healthcare workers where they can find, share, and buy all of their gear and resources, anything from digital files and study guides and ebooks for nursing students, all the way to scrubs and niche products for healthcare workers designed by other healthcare workers who have found those same sort of pain points and problems and created um, solutions for them or apparel lines that um, are are fun and we can relate to and items like that. But it is a inclusive space where you don't have to go to multiple different platforms to find everything you need. You can find them all in one space and support your fellow healthcare workers while you do it. That's, and you know, I guess, Jennifer, all the times you and I've talked, I guess I never really realized that all of your products are also made by nurses. I thought it you were bringing together products from no matter what, who made them, if you will. And But I did not realize that that was also part of your mission, if you will, is to support other nurse entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I think 80% or so of the vendors that we have within the marketplace are founded by other healthcare professionals. And then the other bits of products are very niche items that support like clinical practice or profession or wellness within the for healthcare workers. So mm -hmm. a very curated and niche brands and products. Mm -hmm. All right. So Anthony, you talk a little bit about the communities piece of, of Adne, because I, I know you are out there gathering nurses and inspiring others. Yeah, I mean, community has been so foundational for our business since the day one. Like before we even had a product, we like started building a community of nurses, nursing students, healthcare workers. And I think really just kind of bring us together surrounding this mission of unity in healthcare. And no matter if you're a nurse or a CNA or a physician or a respiratory therapist, you know, we all work together to serve our patients. So yeah, everything we do at Adney is community driven, whether it's like bringing on a new product or, you know, leaving reviews in our marketplace or referring other brands and products. Everything is kind of driven by our community of healthcare pros. And throughout our build, we've hosted like in-person events and have done a lot to kind of just celebrate the healthcare community and give back as much as possible in hopes to just empower us and, and bring us all together. But yeah, as Jennifer mentioned, we definitely focus on businesses founded by healthcare workers. That's definitely become something we're really passionate about is just helping other healthcare workers start a business and be able to launch it on Adney and be able to reach a large community of fellow healthcare pros. 
all about healthcare workers supporting healthcare workers. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. All right. So my final question, we all have these questions. What's the one piece of advice that you would, that old famous question, if I only knew then what I know now. So what is that one where you think, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known this when I first started. Well, you go ahead. Who wants to, I'm wondering, Jennifer, do you want to go and try? What do you wish that you've like, have learned now that you knew then? I wish that I would have known then what I know now. When I grew up, I didn't have a bunch of people to the left and right of me that were that weren't nurses, weren't doctors, weren't, um, didn't go to college, uh, didn't have a lot of support around me as far as what you're capable of doing and being empowered. And I think that maybe a lot of people can find themselves in those situations, like not having a good representation of what you're capable of. And then society's perception of nurses and being solely at the bedside. And, and I think that a lot of A lot of those exterior things can affect your ability to think what you're capable of and empower you to go and create and do. And I think if I would have known then, what I would have known, what I wish I would have known then is that it doesn't matter what anybody else does to the left or right of you. And it doesn't matter what anybody else's perception is of you, that you are completely empowered to go and do and change the world in really great ways. And if you have enough passion and enough excitement about what you're trying to accomplish and the vision ahead of you, then you can conquer so much. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about really understanding your why, because that is what motivates you to be able to move the needle in healthcare, because there are envelopes that need to be pushed and there are needles that need to be moved. And so for all the nurses that are listening to there and maybe not having the resources and support on the side of you, reach out. I wish I would have known that sooner because there are people who, and there are programs out there who are able to go ahead and provide you the skill set you need or the encouragement you need. And so I offer that to everybody else. Um, Feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to go ahead and lend you a helping hand as far as what next steps look like and encourage you along the process. Oh, that's great. I think I would imagine there's a lot of nurses in that feeling the same way. So that's really terrific advice. All right, Anthony, your advice. If you wish I knew then what I know now, what would you, what would that be? Yeah, I mean, it's hard act to follow. Jennifer had really good thoughts. I would say probably my biggest takeaway from our experience, and it's something I wish I could go back and tell myself when starting the journey, is really just how important it is to have focus. Because there are so many distractions along your journey. And there are so many different things you could be doing. But at the end of the day, you know, when you're starting a business, like you do have limited resources, and there only is X amount of hours in a day, you know, and even if you're working super efficiently, you can't do everything at once. And I think this is something that we really struggled with throughout our journey because we were like so excited to just build for nurses. We wanted to do everything. Like we wanted to build products, we wanted to do tech, we wanted to do this, we wanted to go and meet our community in person, host events all over the country. And I think that was amazing. But I feel like there definitely has has been really importance in focusing in on one thing and, and really kind of giving that your all. And once you get really good at that, you can then expand and grow and, and get do other things. But I think just remember as an entrepreneur to have that focus and try to like leave out all the distractions because there's going to be so many things that come up that will take your time away or will take your energy away. And you have to be really good at focusing in on what you're building, talking to your users, building your product, and everything else is pretty much secondary. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great too. Yeah. Well, it's not easy, right? If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. But thank you. I can't just thank you enough, both of you, for joining us today. I am, I'm sure I got inspired listening to you and I'm, I'm on the other side of the journey. Jennifer knows I'm in the midst of building a fund, have incorporated a company and I'm building, looking for limited partners to fund a, a nurse founders fund where we would be nurses, nurse leaders, investing in other nurses nurse entrepreneurs. And so I think we're, you all are, we're all creating this new ecosystem in this new world. And I just think the world's our oyster and it's just going to be fun to see where it all goes. 
So thank you both again for joining me today. And if any of our listeners have questions or comments or would like to reach out to Anthony or Jennifer, just please let us know. And if you need more information, you can visit us on hire.vivian.com. And thank you. Thank you.